How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to share with you the great detective is back 1 12th scale collectible action figure from Noir Toys. It's funny because there's nothing on the front of this box aside from the picture there that says this is Batman. There's a Gmail address for Noir Toys, which is kind of a strange thing to put on the front of the box. And just like the side, we get the great detective is back. However, it doesn't say Batman. And it doesn't say Gotham by Gaslight. It does, however, say on the top left, artistic interpretation. But it's clear from the promo images that this was intended to be a Gotham by Gaslight interpretation of Batman. But you don't see the word Batman anywhere on the box or the DC logo. Which, if I'm being honest, has me wondering if this is actually even really a licensed DC product. I mean, is it? Is it really? Anyway, you can see that I got the normal version. There was an exclusive version available that had more stuff that came with it, but I just, the regular one is fine. And before we open it, I kind of want to read the whole artistic interpretation thing down below here. A 19th century dark knight. He is a genius, a master of martial arts, an expert detective, and a guardian of Gotham. It's funny how the word and <laughs> is and with the D way over on the other side. <laughs> you couldn't have put the whole word and <laughs> on the second line. The Dark Knight is the first piece from Noir Toy's upcoming 1 12th Hero Series action figures. The whole body is about 17 centimeters tall and has 28 movable joints. Real fabric material is matched with individually designed superhero body with shapeable cape faithful to the style and I, I, I am Age of the Dark Knight, but I don't understand. And uh, who cares? Anywho, let's open them up and have a little look on the inside at this possibly unlicensed product. At this point, I'm still not sure. Hocus Pocus Anamagocus. My goodness, there's a lot of stuff in this bubble. This isn't even the deluxe version. I'm going to try and hold it up so you can see what's on the inside here. Oh, never mind. Oh, definitely never mind. You might as well fall out too. Take that. Oh, his head fell off. We have a problem here. Let's just dump everything out. Oh. Does the head not come attached to the body on purpose or was that just mine? Oh, I'm pushing down and okay, finally, it's sticking there. I want to put the goggles up for the video. Goggles up. Okay, wow. This, this is amazing. I, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, this is going to get a very good review. This Batman figure has a very good accessory count with four knives, four batarangs, a slew of extra hands, a grapple gun, a figure base, and the little capey do that goes over the shoulders. And technically you can probably count those goggles that came on his face too, because they're removable. And just the overall build of this figure and everything included is absolutely fantastic. Let's look at everything individually. Now, starting with the figure base, I can only say, heck yeah, this is how you do it. Show them how it's done, Noir Toys. You've got one, two, three joints in the arm, and two claws, and a little piece to sit under his taint, the taint bar. And so far, these pieces are actually fairly tight. Whoops. Uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> okay, when you put it back on, it still is, it still is fairly tight. I will say, I do kind of wish that this had teeth on it, though. Just like soft, rounded edge teeth. The stand articulates here, it articulates here, and of course, at all three of the arm points. But just looking at the base itself... This is so fantastically done. There's a black wash over this fantastically sculpted base with a cool looking bat on the front. And take note, the bottom of this actually has felt on it. So when I put it down, you can't hear it. It's actually soft and grippy. Furthermore, it's a serious base. This is made out of some kind of a resin or something that is entirely different than what most action figure bases are made out of. Next we have the bat grapple and this is really fantastically done as well. Everything has this kind of black wash over it and it's an incredibly fantastically sculpted bat grapple. 
And then Batman has four of these throwing knives, which look stunning as well. They're so small, but they're so well detailed and painted and sculpted. I, I really like these. And then we come to the star of the show, and that's the Batman figure. And I'm telling you, no photos that I take in this video are going to do this action figure justice. This truly is an adult collectible. This figure here is worthy of the title, Adult Collectible. Now the first thing I want to get to is Batman's utility belt. This bad boy has been painted and sculpted fantastically. You have yellow and then you have a darker wash over top and then you've got all the metal parts of his utility belt that have been painted in silver and this is really, really well done. It has that kind of worn Batman look. And yeah, once we finish looking at the figures, we will indeed put his bat grapple and those daggers, those bat throwing knives into the utility belt as well. The chest portion of Batman's suit is a separate piece that's been sewn on. Now the buttons and the bat are just that paint stamping, but I can't imagine that rubbing off anytime soon from basic adult handling. The fabric is actually a really nice fabric too. Maybe it looks a bit shiny, but I'm okay with it looking as kind of glossy as it does because the fabric, the texture, just feels really, really nice and silky. Each one of Batman's gauntlets has been fantastically sculpted too, having an actual kind of leather texture to them. And if you can see here, there's actual stitch lines where Batman, you can see, made these out of leather and then, it, then put these spikes, these, these scallops through. So again, Fantastic. Same thing for Batman's boots. They actually have a leather look to them. They're textured. They have all the wrinkles in all the right places. They are a separate piece that fits over top of the leg in the same way that the gauntlets are a separate piece that fits over top of the forearm, but they look like real boots. And the bottoms of Batman's boots actually looks like he's been stomping around outside in dirty old Gotham City. Look, he's even got dirt on the bottom of his boots. So just all in all, I feel like as far as the painted detail and the sculpting, they've gone out 110% to make something entirely unique and high quality. Same thing can be said for Batman's head sculpt and neck piece of his cowl. Again, it looks like actual leather, which is nice. It's been sculpted fantastically and you got those stitch lines up the neck and the face. Not only is it masterfully sculpted, but it's also painted really, really well. I mean, look at those stitch lines on the top of the cowl. They did a fantastic job with this guy. And finally, Batman's cape also has the look of leather. It actually looks kind of like leather. And it's been creased to actually hang over his shoulders properly and have that Batman cape look to it. And it is wired around every single edge. This cape has wires that have been sewn into it. And take note of the sew job. That is some fantastic stitch work that goes all the way around the edge of Batman's cape. So I've really got to say, for a figure that I knew I was going to like, I am so far entirely blown away by the quality of this Batman figure. All right, now let's start attaching things to him. So of course, each one of Batman's throwing knives is going to fit nicely into his utility belt. And then his grapple gun just stows right there at the back of the utility belt, just like that. Kind of odd that it would just be, you know, hanging out like that at the side while he's fighting crime and stuff. And then of course, there's the extension to his cape, the shoulder piece which has these two little elastics that are meant to go under the arms. You will need to take the hands and the gauntlets off. And I'm just gonna take his head off too, just to make it easier. And I'm gonna stick the first arm under the elastic, followed by the second one. It is a little bit tricky, not gonna lie, to get it on there. But with a little bit of patience and perseverance, you can get it on there. Just pop the head back on each of the gauntlets along with the fist, we end up with our completed look. Dude, dude, this is really, really, I can't stress how much I like this. Okay, so real quick, I just wanna do some comparisons so that you can get an idea of the scale of this guy. 
The tail Gotham by Gaslight on this side, and if you don't know how big he is, well, I think that most people know the scale of a DC Universe Classics figure. And, and yes, I, I really don't need to point out that a lot of these that I'm going to show have been customized, but you get the idea. That's the, the body buck scale of a DC Universe Classics. How about the Mafex Dark Knight Returns Batman? That's a beefy boy. And what about a Mafex Hush Batman? We know that the Mafex Hush Batman is not exactly a very huge Batman figure. And still, this guy seems a little petite standing next to him. How about a Mezco Supreme Knight Batman? Or a Mezco Sovereign Knight Batman figure? Or a Mafex and SH Figuarts scale Justice League Batman figures? Or two more from SH Figuarts? The Keaton Batman and the Injustice Batman. And then finally, what about two Rebirth era Batman figures? One from DC Icons and one from Mattel's DC Multiverse. I feel like as far as size goes, it's the DC Icons that this Batman definitely is the most in scale with. So that should give you a really good idea of exactly what the size of this guy is. Now for his articulation, He's actually fairly well articulated. Now, I'm not going to push the legs too much just based on the idea of not wanting to stretch this suit to its max. I'm not going to put him in any crazy poses, but he does have a full range of movement up here in the legs. There's rotation. He has double jointed knees. He's got the ankles. He's got the toes. He has so much articulation from the waist down. Of course, he's got a free range at the waist. He's got articulation in the torso. He's got a full range of motion in the shoulders, likely being ball joints and butterflies, having double jointed crunchy elbows, as well as those rounded hinges for the wrists and the head being on a ball peg. So this guy really does have a full range of motion as well. So I suppose the final question that needs to be answered at this point is, what do I think of this Batman figure? Do I think that it has been worth my time and effort and funds to track him down? In this case, I had to buy him on eBay for just over a hundred bucks. Or do I feel like it was a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad waste of money? Well, look, <laughs> you've been here the whole time. So we're all on the same page here. This Batman is fantastic. Even though it doesn't say Gotham by Gaslight on the box, we all know exactly what this is supposed to be. This action figure is an object of sheer action figure beauty. There's not one bad thing I can say about this. I can't think of one thing that I don't like about it. Not one. So this figure is going to get the super rare score of 10 out of 10. When I take into account the overall quality, the appearance of the figure, the accessory count, there isn't one thing that I would change about this guy. I love this guy so much, and I am so stoked that I have the opportunity, the privilege, to add this to my Batman action figure collection. And I just know you will too. But anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, found that a useful waste of time for the day, and if you have, that's fantastic. You know where all the buttons are that do all the stuff, and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.